By the end of this video, you should be able to do the following. Name an organic molecule that has single or double or triple bonds. You should also be able to identify branches or substituents. You should be able to name organic molecules with multiple branches on the longest continuous chain of carbons. I'm going to start with this problem. I see that I have a couple different starting points to start counting the longest continuous chain of carbons. So that's the first step, is count the longest carbon chain. Now that means it has to be continuous. So I see that I have a chain of five carbons that way. I could also count in green one, two, three, four, five. If I start by counting the way I did that I uh, have written in blue, that is a branch. The branch does not count as part of the longest continuous chain. It's like a tree branch. It's, it's not, it's attached to the tree trunk, but it's separate. That's separate from the chain, and that's separate from the chain. Now, if I were to number this in green, let me show you again, I'll get rid of the blue. The way I have it numbered, as you see, by my green pen, if I did it that way, I still get five carbons in the longest continuous chain. And so that is a branch because it's not part of my chain of five that you see counted here. This would be a branch and that would be a branch. It ends up having the same type of branches with the same name and the same amount of branches. So it doesn't matter which way you number this. So I'm going to keep it the way I have it here. Now, the first thing I did was determine the longest continuous chain of carbons. Then the second thing to do would be to um, assign a parent or root name that will tell me how many carbons are in the longest continuous chain. And since we said there were five in the longest continuous chain, the parent or root name is pent. The suffix, meaning the ending, of the name is ane, and I'll draw an arrow that tells me how I know it is ane, because these are carbon-carbon single bonds. Now, remember the boxes that I illustrated earlier? There are three different groups. Well, I'm sorry, not different, but there are three groups. They actually happen to be the same name. The name of this branch is methyl, and I'll explain why. If you recall from the earlier video, meth indicated one carbon, YL means that it is a branch. This actually is an example of an alkyl group, such as methyl or ethyl. Those are alkyl groups. I have three methyl groups, so I need to indicate that in the name by saying trimethyl, and the branch always gets named out in front. This is actually all one word, so I'll connect that. The tri tells me that I have three of the same group, three methyl groups. So you need to indicate to the, the person who's drawing the structure on which number carbons these methyl groups are located. And that's why I have these numbers here in green. So I see a methyl group coming off of the second carbon and I have another methyl group coming off the second same second carbon. So that would be two, and we use commas to separate numbers. So two comma two, and this methyl branch, remember it was not part of my chain of five carbons, so that's what makes it a branch, and that is coming off of the fourth carbon. We also use hyphens or dashes to separate numbers from letters. So the name of this molecule is 2,2,4-trimethylpentane. The last section of this video will be how to name double or triple bonds, and these should actually be pretty easy, assuming that you've put in the time to learn the rules for naming alkane structures. So I'll start by counting the longest continuous chain of carbons. I know that I have to start from the left side and count to the right, not always, but because I have a double bond, the rule says that the double bond needs to be um, on the lowest number carbon possible. So that's why I'm not going to number it as you see in green, from right to left. 
because then if you look at these numbers, I have 3, 4. In blue, if I count it this way, the double bond is between carbon 1 and 2. And the rule is the double bond must be on the lowest number carbon possible. So let's get rid of the poor numbering. And I use the numbering system from left to right. The longest continuous chain is four carbons. The parent name is Butte. Because I have a double bond, this structure belongs to the alkene family, as seen here. And so it gets the same suffix, E on E. Now you need to tell me where to draw this double bond. So you could have either said one butene or just left it as butene because it's assumed that it's on the lowest number of carbon. So if they don't tell you a one, then you assume it's one butene. However, if you had the double bond here, you would then have to say 2-butene. Just like in naming, or I'm sorry, writing chemical formulas, for example, carbon dioxide, the 1 is assumed. You do not write carbon dioxide like that. Moving on to the alkyne, you see the suffix is Y-N-E. That means there is a triple bond somewhere within the structure. You start as you always do, count the longest continuous chain of carbons. I see a triple bond here, so I know I have to start counting from left to right because the triple bond is closer to the left side. The parent name, that means three carbons. I can remember my memory sentence, Mike eats peeled bananas, and since peeled was the third word that I said, meaning three carbons in the chain, I know that my parent name needs to start with a P. I see a triple bond because it belongs to the alkyne, Y-N-E family, it's named propyne, or remember we could also call it 1-propyne. The last lesson here, last part of this lesson, is how to name a molecule with a double or triple bond and a branch. The double or triple bond gets the lower number than the branch. I mean it's on the lower number carbon than the branch. So because I see a branch here and I see a triple bond, I need to start counting closer to the triple bond. So I know this is the way to number it. I could have also numbered it this way and make that the longest continuous chain and then that would be the, the branch. But this is probably how your eye saw it because it's straight. It's easy to see the straight chain. So the parent name would be Butte because there are four carbons in this chain. Because of that triple bond, the triple bond takes precedence. It gets the Y-N-E suffix. And now I name my branch. The branch name always goes out in front. It is a methyl branch. Meth because there's one carbon. Y-L because it is a branch. It's not part of my chain of four carbons. And now you need to tell me on what number carbon the branch is located. And that's what's nice about numbering your carbons. You have it right there.